Well, I'm Greg Funkhauser. I'm partner in charge of government contracting for Dixon Hughes Goodman. I had the pleasure to work with Quasi with his government contracting clients for a number of years. Um, I don't know if it's more fun to work with Quasi on a professional basis or a personal basis because we do get on the links and hit the golf ball now and then, but, but really it's what he's done for my clients and, and what I've done for his clients and how we've helped each other out and helped these contractors that need financing, need to get some money and grow to that next level. And I think that's where we really work together in helping clients you know, grow from one level to the next. And that's the need you've really filled for a lot of my clients. Well, Greg's right. It has been fun both on a personal level and business level. And so my question to you, Greg, is we've been in a challenging government contracting market, which sort of follows on the heels of, you know, sort of historical spending, a very bullish government contracting market. So in your estimation, your opinion, what are the biggest challenges that your, your clients are, are having to overcome? In this well, I, you know, I'd say right now, Quasi, that the biggest challenges are, you know, everybody's afraid they're going to cut the budgets. So if they do, it's how can I be more competitive? How can I take a lower rate to my customer? And how can I, you know, translate that into wins? And uh, every, everybody's a little scared right now. There's no question. How am I going to remain competitive? Um, you know, I know you and I deal a lot with the small business programs, the 8A, the SDBs, the veteran owned, as well as the full and open and the big, the big boys. I'm probably more worried right now about the smaller market, making sure that those new customers are always coming in, those new clients for us, and, and they need a lot of our help on financing, you know, getting their first rates, getting those first contracts, and, and hitting that growth to become, you know, the next tier of government contractors. And I think that's where we fit in a lot. So that's my biggest fear, the government cuts, helping them be more competitive and um, helping them survive. As you probably heard this evening, one of the big focuses for Federal National is changing the way we communicate with the government contract community. One of the big, one of the big emphasis we're placing on that particular program is we want to be sure that you know, we provide information that is timely and relevant uh, for a government contractor. So, can you give us any advice on you know, you know what uh, what type of information would would be most helpful in helping your clients meet their goals and objectives? Um, you know, obviously, always knowing what the net, their financing alternatives are is, is very important. That's the lifeblood, cash flow of of any business, government contract or not. You know, you, you've got to have the cash flow, timely information on new re, you know new regulations coming out. Uh, for instance, last year, for the first time in a decade, SBA put out their first new really 8A regulations. There's a lot of penalties in there. They've kicked out 5,000 8As in the last two years um, because people aren't following the rules and now they've even made the rules strickler with more, you know, um, instead of being loosey-goosey, there's actually some hard numbers now that they have to follow. So, you know, we've got newsletters out for them and, you know, educating our clients and make sure the ones that are, especially our clients, are compliant and staying in these programs is vital for them. You bring up a very good point, Greg. I, I have noticed um, both in action and in you know reading uh, reading the newspaper and, and the various industry rags that enforcement is a big emphasis um, within the government tra contracting community. Um, how do you go about you know, preparing the new entrant to the government contracting community, as well as the veteran who has has you know become accustomed to to, you know, the loosey goosey environment that, that sort of precedes this, this heavy enforcement environment. Well, you know, uh, you know, everybody says government contracting, wow, well, you got to deal with this regulated environment. But actually, we love dealing with the regulated environment because our clients that do it right do it right. That's right. And, um, you know, there, there's two main areas we see DCAA, Bill Walter, runs our government contracting consulting practice. Um, he's ex DCAA. He's, you know, been over in the war arenas, he's been through Iraq and Afghanistan with these contractors over there. He's testified before Waxman and the Oversight Committee. I mean, you've got to stay compliant with the DCAA and DCMA is, is doing to your clients. And if they're compliant with that, you know, that's a good first step. With our small business people, the veteran owned and the 8As, it's SBA. And like I said, they just came out with the new rules. So it's keeping them compliant with all the rules. Those that stay compliant, understand the rules, 
understand how to negotiate our industry do very well. And as well as you know, those that don't, don't survive. So it's, it's negotiating all the compliance. Greg, you may have realized from some of the comments earlier this evening that there is also a big emphasis on Federal National providing financing to government contractors all across the country. And I understand with the recent merger of Goodman and Dixon Hughes that you sort of widened your footprint. Um, I think you cover, you know, I think you have firms all over the country, um, but I think specifically you have firms all up and down the Eastern Seaboard. What do you attribute to the firm's success in you know, covering such a wide breadth of geographical area um, and still staying focused on the government contract? Well, one, one thing, you know, Goodman and Company, who I came from, merged with Dixon Hughes, and um, our footprint runs from West Virginia down to Florida over to Texas. So we're, we've got a big southeast footprint. And we're the 13th biggest CPA firm in the country. So we, we have a lot of clout in the area. But it, it's really not the size of the geographical area. It's, it's dedicating professionals to an industry. So we have numerous specialty industries, real estate, healthcare, banking, you know, things I wouldn't even pretend to understand. But, you know, I run the government contracting practice. My people, my auditors, my tax people, my consultants, everybody in our group is dedicated to that industry. And you really have to become an expert. You really have to know your industry to provide your client the best service to succeed. So it's really the specialization, and, and that's where the big firms are going, really understanding the arena they do business in. I think that has been you know, one of the biggest reasons for Federal National success. I think no, I, our, I totally agree. Our, our focus on government contracting, understanding how to serve the government contract community, you know, providing them with guidance and quick access to capital, I think has, has been the biggest reason for our success. And as you know, we sort of built the firm on the tenets of, of service, value, and trust. So. I'll ask you to you know share um, share with us sort of what that means and, and, and how you viewed us in interacting with your client and, and how that manifests itself. Well, you know the most important deal, important thing for me dealing with some you know it, with FN, well two squared now I guess. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Got to get the new the new lingo down. You know having dealt with you with years is FNP. I'm, I'm going to make the adjustment. But um, you know the biggest thing is you know. We have the same care for a client, right. you know. At the end of the day, the fact is, a lot of your clients, you know, end up graduating from you right. and end up going into the banking community. Right. It's it's who's there for them, you know, at a time when they need them. They can get them the financing they need and really understands their needs. And you and I both know so many banks, etc., don't really understand lending to government contracting at all. That's right. And they don't understand the power of a government receivable, getting it. Um, the contract monitors, you collect that receivable directly and how that can be a very safe practice for both the lender and the borrower and let them grow to that next level. And you know, my biggest testament to you and, and dealing with you over the years is the number of clients that we've worked together that have graduated out of your business and gone on to you know full and open banging and bigger things because you were there when you needed them, you provided a solution when you needed them, you understood their business, and you understood to lend to their business. Right. And you know, to that, we'll, we'll always work together. That is, uh, we, Greg, we, we've enjoyed working with the firm, I think, uh, three generations now. Damn, you know, go, we'll, you'll have to mention that. that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Goodman, and now Dixon Hughes Goodman, and you know, we've certainly enjoyed a great partnership, and we appreciate it, and look forward to the future. Um, I would also say that um, you know, the, the best success story uh, we can create is actually um, taking on a firm um, you know, that has weaknesses in certain areas and you know, we're able to, to quickly provide a cash flow solution and watching them improve in, in certain areas and grow to the point where you know, they can graduate to a bank and ultimately uh, see them exit and you know, create wealth for the business owner and it's great to go back to former clients uh, who remember, they remember um, in vivid detail um, you know the circumstance and all the actions leading up to us consummating a relationship and, and and how we're able to assist them and I'm sure you would agree sort of the best part of the job is actually dealing with the small business clients so they in yeah, my opinion I agree. they're a lot of fun they are a lot of fun <laughs> yeah they, 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 they make it great they're, they're some of the most dynamic people 
uh, that I've ever encountered. So, you know, they, they certainly make the, uh, they make life uh, very interesting and, and a lot of fun.